Now, have you ever heard of a uh, dill pickle soup? I know, right? Are you mind blown? So was I. Just by thinking and smelling it, because I have a little bit <laughs> in front of me now, but just by thinking about it, 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 I salivate because it's so good. It hits you in all those um, places in your tongue. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, let me show you how I put it together. Otherwise, I'm going to be blabbing about it because I could, because it's so good. So let me show you. So we're going to add all-purpose flour, sour cream and veggie broth to a bowl and whisk to combine. Now, uh, if you can get your hands on a vegan sour cream or cream fresh, you can make your own-ish by blending cashews and uh, adding a little bit of a garlic powder and lemon or a lime juice. And uh, because we, you have the base sort of alkaline and then you have a little bit of acidity from the lemons and that's it. I mean, no big deal. It's just uh, to balance everything out along with the um, nutritional yeast is going to bring all the flavors together. Now we're going to add some vegan butter to a pot, medium high heat. And we're going to add onions. Once they're sauteed and golden, then we're going to add carrots and celery. And we're going to saute them for five minutes more. We're going to add garlic. And now we're going to add the pickles, cubed potatoes, some veggie broth, the flour, sour cream and veggie broth mixture, some salt, pepper and a little bit of nutritional yeast. It's optional, but I highly recommend because it brings all the flavors together, okay? One more thing about this recipe. Once you get uh, your hands on a dill pickles, try to find the ones that are not too acidic, okay? And the ones that are not also too sweet because uh, otherwise the soup is going to be a little bit sweeter because remember, we're, uh, we have um, carrots, celery and onions and those three, they are pretty high in sugar. So um, the soup can be a little bit more sweeter than it's supposed to, so be careful with that. And now we're gonna let it cook until the potatoes are soft. Some people have written books, some have a great look that covers the magazine. Kids who are 17, but I don't know what to do. Staring into the blue sky and just waiting for a sign. Some they are certain of what awaits them when it all ends. But I don't know what will happen to me. Will I be remembered in a century? Or will I be forgotten like dust in the wind? Or the talk of the town that we are living? Someone who's left their age Reading from a torn out page From a book filled with lies But I don't know what to do I'm staring into the blue sky And just waiting for a sign Some they are certain Of what awaits them When it all ends But I don't know What will happen to me Will I be remembered in a century Or will I be forgotten Like dust Talk of the town that we are living in 
Well, I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know. On my soup over here, on the second day, because I had some uh, leftovers, I added some um, sweet, no, what? No, smoked paprika. That was fantastic. That's why it's a little bit reddish. It's delicious. Guys, mm. this screams comfort food. And that's what uh, autumn and winter is all about. I mean, year round. <laughs> it's always, every time about comfort food, isn't it? But this is so good and so easy. You can put it together in 10 minutes, like I said. It, less than 10 minutes and then it takes, I don't know, like eight minutes to cook and that's it. I mean, super, super easy. How about that? Don't you love it? I love it. Uh, I know you like my bowl, don't you? I also love it. So if you want to get one of those, <laughs> go to my Amazon shop because, because you're going to ask me on the comments. So it's going to be listed here on my Amazon shop. And this is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I absolutely love, 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 love this recipe. It's amazing. So that's why I wanted to bring it to you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Follow me on my social media, uh, Chef Jana on uh, Instagram if you make it tag me and uh, Facebook Chef Jana Pinheiro and this is it I'll see you next time have a fabulous week bye bye Jana here welcome to my kitchen look what I have in front of me it's a work of art it's summery delicious it's a cold tomato soup I know right it's not gazpacho totally different it's a uh, Italian actually uh, I, I was inspired by Lydia Bastianich recipe she's amazing I love her I veganize a lot of her food so I thought that would be perfect for these beautiful sunny days uh, you can either have it hot or cold, so that's super versatile. So let me show you how I put it together. First of all, we're going to add olive oil to a pot. And we're going to add minced shallots or leeks, just because they're milder than uh, white onions. When they're golden, you add some celery and carrots and then sprinkle with salt. You can add some celery seeds, some pepperoncino for some hotness, but if you don't like it hot, just leave it out. Black pepper. And we're going to use actually canned tomatoes because they, are the per they have the perfect balance of uh, sweetness and acidity and water. Okay? It is difficult to find the perfect tomatoes depending where you live, unless you live at the bottom of Vesuvio in Italy or <laughs> maybe any... Hi! Hello! Look who's here. Hi, baby. Hi! She wants to... <laughs> It's very rare that she does that. Hi, hello. Okay, you're gonna have to move, sweetie. People are gonna yell at us. Okay, okay. So, it's very, uh, okay, <laughs> let me go back. She made me lose my, my line of thought. So, um, the perfect tomatoes to make that are, okay, okay, I'm gonna have to move her. <laughs> Kids. So, as I was saying, uh, tomato soup, tomato sauce, so, um, it's very easy to make, but it's very also easy to get it wrong because of the tomatoes. It's not every tomato that is suitable for uh, every type of uh, sauce or uh, soup. So if you want to know more about that, click over here because I explain very well the difference between the tomatoes. And in this case, it's the same thing. So if you can get your hands on a good San Marzano tomatoes, uh, uh, canned tomatoes, perfect, okay? That's what we're gonna use. Now, you add the canned tomatoes. You can crush them before, I forgot, actually. Some cucumbers, fresh basil, some orange peels, and the juice of one orange. Now, trust me, I thought when I, when I uh, watched uh, Lydia making the recipe, I was like, yeah, tom tomatoes and oranges, 
it works beautifully. Um, the acidity and the sweetness of both complement each other in a beautiful way. And it's very summery, like I said. So I'm salivating just <laughs> thinking about it because when I made, I was like, oh my God, the, the amount of uh, colors in the pot, it was like beautiful. You're gonna love it when you make it too. So now we're going to cover it and let it simmer in a medium low uh, heat for about uh, 20 minutes. We need the tomatoes to cook through, okay? We're going to blend it later, but we need it to cook through. Otherwise, your soup is going to taste raw, which is not a problem, but it's going to taste acidic, okay? Now you remove the orange peels and we're going to blend it. We're going to add unsweetened vegan yogurt or kefir. Stroll downtown this evening when I heard music echo through the night. The same old songs that I heard the night before, so I started running so I wouldn't be too late. I didn't think that I would ever see your face again, but I was wrong. Now, this is or this is not a work of art. So simple to make, isn't it? And it's so beautiful. You can add um, a little bit of water and make it a little bit more thin, okay? But then you adjust all the flavors and the salt and everything else to your taste because it's not supposed to be too thick. It's supposed to be a little bit more liquidy. Okay? Actually, it's supposed to be the way you want it to be because that's your food. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is so, so good. Now, I like my food hot. So if you've seen me adding like a fourth of a tablespoon of a peperoncino, that's how I like it. It's quite, quite hot. Some people won't, won't like it. So be careful with that. When you're serving for a guest or a family, not everybody like the same level of spiciness and hotness, so be careful with that. Again, repeating myself. <laughs> I want to make sure that you're like, oh my God, it was good, but I had to call the fire department. That's not the case. <laughs> so uh, if you make it, please tag me on Instagram and Facebook and uh, take pictures. I love when you guys do that, okay? Head over to my website for the printable recipe, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you next time. Have a fabulous week, bye-bye. <laughs>Jana here welcome to my channel so today we're going to make one of my favorite soups ever I'm not joking this is so feeling so perfect for winter days we're going to make a no cheddar and broccoli cream creamy soup it's oh my god have you seen the thumbnail have you seen the picture it is exactly <laughs> what it claims to be beautiful and delicious and let me show you how I put it together all right, first you add olive oil and vegan butter to a pot and then you add the minced onions. Let them cook until they achieve that beautiful light golden brown color. And then you add shredded carrots and the bay leaf. Now you add salt, pepper and smoked paprika. 
and to that we're going to add my garlic blend which uh, we have made on the channel a very nice recipe for a nice garlic blend so um, you don't need to chop garlic every time you want to make a recipe you do it once put it in a food processor freeze it and then you have it for uh, later use and uh, that's exactly what I did so click in the on the cards over there if you want to know how I made it do it because you're gonna love it and then we're going to let it cook for five minutes now the hardest vegetable here and the one that needs more cooking apart from the onions that we have already tackled that we have already uh, cooked them and they're beautiful and golden brown is the carrots so the carrots they need actually those five minutes that I've mentioned they do need that they I want them soft and I want most of all I want them to release the beautiful orange color because this is one of the ways that they're going to simulate that the beautiful um, uh, yellow cheddar cheese color but because we're not going to going to use any cheddar cheese not even not even the vegan kind because it's not so good I think in the soup we can like I said at the beginning emulate a different all the flavors without the need to add that so we need the carrots to cook to achieve the color now we're going to add all-purpose flour and stir for two to three minutes It is very, very, very important that you cook this step, that you cook the flour very well. Otherwise, you're going to end up with these, um, uh, I, I can't even describe it. it, it's like horrible. So the flour always at the beginning of the cooking uh, uh, because it, it needs a little bit more time to cook and not only when you uh, boil and simmer the soup later, it needs to uh, cook at this stage okay so two to three minutes now we're going to add the veggie broth and to emulate that cheese taste there are a few ingredients that uh, for you guys might sound a little bit unusual and it is <laughs> but it works so bear with me we're going to add olive brine. You know when you buy an olive jar and then it comes in that um, liquid? That's the liquid that I'm talking about. What, whatever kind of olives you have, okay? So we're going to add one tablespoon of that. A little bit of liquid smoke, go easy. And a little bit of food coloring or turmeric. Now when it comes to turmeric, you need to be a little bit careful because it has a lot of tannins and tannins give that uh, chalky sensation on the back of your tongue if you add too much to your food. So go easy. I prefer in this case to add food coloring. To me it's easy to find, so uh, if you can get your hands on it, or if you can't it doesn't really matter, it's just because I want it to look extra beautiful for you guys, but it's not necessary. You can add the turmeric and that's fine. Nutritional yeast. And now we're going to add the minced broccoli. You can add a little bit more water if you think it needs to. And now we're going to let it cook for about five minutes because we want the, uh, the broccoli to uh, soften up and to cook a little bit but not too much because we don't want the broccoli uh, with that uh, pale uh, green pale color and mushy we want them beautiful colorful and firm cooked but, but firm now you add plant-based milk and vegan cream and you're going to cook for three minutes more And I always mention this because this is super useful. This is, this is a very useful tip. Uh, whenever you make a stew or um, uh, I don't know, anything. <laughs> I think I can think of if it's savory, if you add a few drops of lemon at the end of the cooking, uh, at the end of the cooking process, you're going to feel that uh, number one, it's going to brighten it up, all the flavors, bring it all together. And number two, you're going to go easier on the salt. If you think it needs uh, adjusting the salt, if you add a little drops of lemon, sometimes that's what it needs. It's just a little bit of acid to bring everything together, all the flavors together. So 
I, every time I make a soup or a stew, especially soups and stews, I always do that. So I encourage you to do that and incorporate this um, tip to your daily cooking. You're not gonna regret. You have no idea. Mm. Mm. Another thing about the broccoli. If you cook the broccoli just... I have an onion. <laughs> My tooth. Okay, now it's gone. So, if you cook the broccoli just uh, enough, you know, next day when, you, when you're going to reheat the soup, you're not going to lose it. You're not going to um, overcook it. So, that's the word that I was looking for overcook it so you're not going to overcook it because it was al dente and that's what we're looking for so i reheated it now and then I, after i made it i reheated one more time so two times now and uh perfect i still have a very nice beautiful crunchy al dente uh broccoli perfection so i hope you have enjoyed it i love this i hope you make it and if you do please tag me facebook and instagram and follow me on my social media it's gonna be link um on your screen right here recipe uh, printable recipe on my website as always and on the description box below and if you wanna know how you can support this channel please click over here then uh, you will be linked to my patreon page and to my patrons thank you so much i love you you are awesome and uh this is it take care of each other have a fabulous week see you next time bye bye Hi there my lovelies, this is Jana here, welcome to my channel. So today we're going to make a Portuguese soup which is called uh, caldo verde and translates as um, something along the lines of uh, green broth, but it's not green and it's not a broth, so go figure. But it is so delicious and it's very popular in Brazil <laughs> because Brazil was colonized by Portuguese and then we have this very tight and beautiful relationship with Portugal and the food is a little bit um, not a little bit but a lot influenced by Portugal a lot where I'm from also from uh, Germany and, it, and Italy but uh, Portuguese food is all over Brazil so let me show you how I put it together so before we start with the soup i'm going to make a broth a vegetable broth because this soup is so easy it's so simple and it's so fast so i think it deserves a little bit of extra love and that's exactly what i'm going to do so a tip for you uh when you're going to make a vegetable broth you keep collecting the broccoli ends the um, uh, celery roots and the little pieces and bits of vegetables that they they are either too small to be used or simply leftovers put it in your freezer and then later when you have enough and then you put it all together and make a very beautiful and rich broth and that's exactly what we're going to do now now we're going to start with a few herbs this is a bouquet garni and I have here a bay leaf parsley thyme and rosemary and then some mushrooms as you can see my mushrooms here have seen better days and carrots, celery, onions, and leeks. Some water. And 
And for some umaminess, a little bit of tomato paste. You can add tomatoes as well. I didn't have any, and I actually didn't want to waste the whole tomato to make that if I had a tomato paste, because the idea is, as you've seen my vegetables, they have seen better days, and that's exactly why I'm doing this, because they are almost about to get brown and stuff, so they're, uh, they're packed with extra flavors. So to that, we're also going to add garlic. And now we're going to let it simmer for, I don't know, one hour uh, on a low heat or medium low heat. If you're going to use for one recipe, then okay. But what I will advise you to do is make it and freeze it because it's going to last for 20 years in your freezer. <laughs> All right, so now that we have tackled the broth part, now we're going to proceed to make the soup, which is, like I said before, very easy. <laughs> so you are going to julienne these uh, collard greens as finely as you can. Now, if you don't have collard greens where you live, because it's possible that, it's, that it happens, you can use kale and you can use spinach and you can use um, uh, acelgas, I don't know how to say that. In, uh, uh, what is the name? Swiss chard. <laughs> Swiss chard. You can use those, but remember to julienne them very, very finely. And now we're going to saute them in a little bit of olive oil. Salt and pepper. And you saute them in medium low heat until they become tender. For the second part of the soup, we're going to uh, pan sear the sausage that we made uh, a few i think last month please make it click over there for the full recipe and make it because this sausage is not only easy but it's super flavorful so that's what we're going to use now we're going to uh, slice them and saute them until they become golden brown to set it aside and uh, we're going to make the soup so olive oil minced onions and we're going to saute them until they are golden brown now at this point you can add the garlic and the bay leaf so this garlic that I have added to the onions here, they are my special garlic blend. Click over there if you wanna know how I made it, which is brilliant because uh, you make it, you blend it, and then you put it in your freeze and then it's, over, it's there for later use. It will last for a month, two months, six months, depends on how much, how much you make it. And it's brilliant because you're not gonna smell like garlic after you cook it, so it's brilliant, I love it. At this point, you add the potatoes salt and pepper now you add the veggie broth and you let it cook until the potatoes are tender now how long will it take i don't know it depends on how big or how small you chop your potatoes keep an eye on it it doesn't really matter if it overcooks because you're going to blend it all afterwards so now we're going to remove the bay leaf and blend it So at this point, if you have some, you can add some vegan cream. Uh, this vegan cream is homemade, click over there on the cards because I have three or four recipes for vegan creams using different ingredients. So I'm sure you're gonna find one so you don't need to buy. If you don't have it and if you don't wanna make it, don't bother, it's not necessary. It just adds a little bit of more uh, creaminess and silkiness to the soup. And as always, a few drops of lemon to brighten up the flavors.
voila! This soup is uh, something so close to my heart because uh, it's one of the things that uh, mom used to put together in no time at all on a weekday because uh, we usually have all the ingredients on hand and uh, except for the sausage I used to devour the soup pick out the sausage, <laughs> put it on the side and then devour it because it was so so nice I, was, uh, I grew up on this and every Brazilian, especially in the south I think we enjoy it because the south of Brazil is uh, a lot colder than the rest of Brazil so we appreciate and we can enjoy more of those uh, broths and soups and uh, creams during the winter and this is one of them and I hope you have enjoyed it, I hope you make it and don't forget to follow me on my social media you think I'm not gonna try? I am salivating <laughs> I'm looking at it and smelling it mm. yeah Mm. it's super rich as in not not in, not in fat but in the flavors and creaminess and you have all the protein from the collard greens it's perfect it's super filling i hope you make it and if you do you know the drill you tag me on instagram and facebook and i have an announcement to make because you guys asked me so much to uh, open the membership for the channel now you can do it you can join the, the channel and become a member and uh, with this, you're going to contribute and help the channel, help me to put more content. And how you do it, you just click on the join button and uh, you can choose what kind of membership suits you better. And um, this is it. I mean, oh, oh, and if you don't want to, you don't feel like it, that's all right. It doesn't really matter. We're going to still be here every week creating contents for you. And uh, yeah, so you asked and that's it. There it is for you. So I hope you have enjoyed this recipe. Uh, like this video, share and subscribe to this channel and become a member if you want. And I see you next time. Have a fabulous week. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.